Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, Lesson 13-5, Volume. It's the third part. We did Perimeter, Area, Now Volume. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Anne Frank. You remember she was a little girl during World War II who, because she was Jewish, she was put into a, um, a camp where some pretty awful things happened, and she ended up dying. So um, she had a lot of courage. And so for her to say something like this, I thought was really cool. She lived, she went into hiding for several years, I think three years, um, just before she was actually captured, her family was captured and put into the camp. She said, earning happiness means doing good and working, not speculating and being lazy. Laziness may look inviting, but only work gives you true satisfaction. I hope you're finding that in math, that Sometimes we tend to be really lazy and not want to take the time to think or work out problems, but when we do really hard problems, it really makes us feel good about ourselves and it prepares us for the future. Our learning goal today is to count cubic units and use formulas to find the volume of rectangular prisms. Here are our learning goals. There's a picture of her at her 10-year-old birthday party and she kept a diary. That's how we know about Anne Frank because she kept a diary throughout the time that she was in hiding. And um, so there's lots of pictures of her writing in her diary that her dad took and kept kind of, he actually survived the war. And so he published her book for her. Our learning goals are to count cubic units to find volume and then to use the volume formula to find the volume of a rectangular prism. The volume, fo volume formula, and my tongue is twisted, is volume equals length times width times height. And I went ahead and wrote that out in words so that you can really visualize what that is, but the formula when we use symbols or letters to represent it is V equals L, remember that's an L, not a one, L for length, times width times height. And when we chant it, we kind of go volume equals length times width times height. Volume equals length times width times height. That'll just help us remember the formula for volume. You'll be using that for the rest of your life. So it's good to learn it now. Make it smarter than the average fifth grader. We are measuring three dimensions. We are looking at, thir at three dimensional shapes. When you talk about a 3D movie, it pops out at you and a three dimensional shape is the same way. Remember from our lesson the other day, this is a three dimensional shape. It has length, it has width, and it has height. So I can hold it in my hand. It's not just a line or a flat figure. I can actually hold it. So now that we're in the third dimension, that's what three dimensional means. It means we're talking about length and width and height. So we put a small three after the measurement unit name. You can see that centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters. And when you think of a cube, this is exactly what we're talking about, a cubic unit, one inch by one inch by one inch. So this is what they're talking about. When we're talking about cubic units, we're talking about little tiny cubic units or big cubic units that have dimension, three dimensions like this. Here's our vocabulary. We're talking about volume. That's the number of cubic units that three-dimensional shape needed to fill a solid figure. Think of a box. How many of those cubic units could we fill, would it take to fill up a box? And a cubic unit is the volume of a cube that measures one unit on each edge. Sometimes we know that they're cubic centimeters, sometimes they're cubic feet or cubic meters or cubic inches. But if we don't have a unit of measurement that's specific, we would say it's a cubic unit. Um, and you will hear that over and over during these lessons. There's the diary of Anne Frank. That's the diary that she actually kept. If you haven't read that, you should. And that's the building that they went into hiding and they had to have a little secret annex we talk about annexing zeros, that's not the same annex, but um, this secret annex was this little secret hiding place that they had back behind a hidden bookcase. Example of counting cubic units. You can see there's the one cubic unit, but I wanted you to see that in 3D is why I showed you the actual solid figure. When we look at that figure to the right, I've actually drawn the squares out for you, or I found a square, I found a figure that had those squares drawn for you so that you can see them. First, you look at how many cubes are in each row, and you can see that by looking at that top row. You can count them, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six cubic units in each row, and then how many rows are there? There are four rows, so you would multiply 
6 times 4 and get 24 if you were counting cubes. If we were doing the volume, um, using the volume formula, we would do the length that we can count how many cubic units are in the length, how many are in the width, and then how many rows tall we have. So that's just kind of an easier way if you actually have the cubic units drawn out for you, count them and multiply. So now we're going to use the formula to figure the volume. In that solid figure that you see right there, if you measure the length, that's the, the, the length goes across the bottom, it's three cubic units. The width is what goes back. You don't have a clear square drawn there, but you can see that it's going back on the side is two cubic units. And the height, that's how tall it is, just like your height is how tall you are, is five cubic units. So remember the formula is volume equals length times width times height. So we substitute the three for the length, the two for the width, and the five for the height, and then multiply them together. So three times two is six, and six times five is 30. Volume equals 30 cubic units, or volume equals 30 cubic units, with the little three showing length, width, and height. Now we're gonna practice. There is some things from her diary there, and there's a really cool picture of her. Um, here's number one. Find the volume of that figure to the right there. You can either count and multiply or you can use the formula. Volume equals length times width times height. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 160 cubic units? If we count across, the length times the width times the height is 160 cubic units. Let's try another one. Ah, we don't have anything to count in this one. We're gonna to have to use the formula. Find the volume of a prism with a length of 12 centimeters, a width of four centimeters, and a height of six centimeters. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Don't forget to write out that formula. Did you write 288 cubic centimeters? 12 times four, times six is 288 cubic centimeters. Number three, find the volume of a cube where the length is 20 meters. Mm, we've got to use what we know about cubes to figure this one out. We're still going to use the formula. Pause it and push play when you figured it out and written it down. Did you write 8,000 cubic meters? Remember, we have to make sure that our unit of measure matches what's in the description and the question. 8,000 cubic meters because in a cube, every side is the same length. So the length is 20, the width is 20, and the height is 20. 20 times 20 is 400, 400 times 20 is 8,000. You probably used mental math to figure that out. Here's a practice word problem. Look at all of those solid figures. So figure A, figure B, figure C, and figure D. Which of these rectangular prisms has or have a volume of 60 cubic units? I used has or have because I didn't want to give you a hint as to if there's just one or if there's more than one. You'll have to solve for the volume of each figure on this one because you don't want to just list one if there's more than one. Pause it and push play when you figure the volume for all four of those solid figures. Did you write D? Yep, there was only one. The length times the width times the height is 60. There it is, volume equals length times width times height. Volume equals four times three times five. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 5 is 60, 60 cubic units. Don't forget that 3. If you don't put that 3 there, you no longer have a three-dimensional shape. You've got a flat square or a flat rectangle on a piece of paper. It's time to challenge yourself. I just wanted to show you a picture of Anne Frank's room in the, in the annex. Um, it's just a little tiny room. She had to share it with someone else, but... Um, at least she had some time that she got to spend with her family for three years before she was put into the concentration camp. And there are some more pictures of her writing in her diary. If you don't write in the diary, you should try it. My kids and I each have a diary. So my daughter and I share a diary where we write back and forth to each other. And my son and I share a diary where we write back and forth to each other. 
and they get to practice their writing skills and we get to have lots of memories written down on paper so that we don't forget them. It's time to challenge yourself. Find the volume of the cube above. This is gonna take a little bit more than just the volume formula. Think about it and show your work in your flip journal. Make sure you defend your answer. Finishing up, there is her diary um, right there. You can read it. I probably got a copy in my classroom you can read if you wanna borrow it. Um, review your learning goals. Do you get the difference between volume, area, and perimeter? You need to know your area when you're solving for volume because length times width is actually area. So if I, if I gave you the area of a figure and then I gave you the height of that figure, you could figure it out. Um, you could figure the volume out simply by having the area and the height of a figure. Write down if you still have any questions. Cool, you have completed lesson 13-5 on volume. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.